Hey guys, Bob here, that Scottish drummer. And in this video, we're gonna look at how you can connect two interfaces together to get maximum inputs. Now, you might be like me and have an old interface still lying around that you can hook up to your new one. Or maybe you just need more inputs so you're looking to buy a new interface. In this video, I'm gonna cover everything you need to know and everything you need to do to get these interfaces working. Now, specifically, I'm gonna be looking at two Focusrite interfaces, the Claret 8 Pre and the Sapphire Pro 40. But this information can be applied to any interface. We'll look at some reasons why you might want to expand. Most rack interfaces, like the two I have here, have eight mic inputs available. But if you're micing up instruments such as a drum kit, you can easily go over that. On this kit, I have eight mics right now, and that's been my setup for a while. But now I have this Talkback mic, and I have my SVD-SX, which brings me to 11 inputs now. You also get the added benefit of extra headphone outputs. So my Claret has two headphone outputs, and my Sapphire has two, and I can use all four of them. I'll show you later on in the video with the software how you route that to get those outputs. Hardware requirements. What you're gonna need, first of all, is two interfaces. And they need to be expandable interfaces, which means they need to be able to communicate with each other. So there's two connections that are used. There's ADAT and SPDIF. And if like I did, you have absolutely no idea what they mean, let me do a brief explanation for you. So first, we'll talk about ADAT. Now with ADAT, it's a single optical connection. And over that connection, you can send eight channels of audio at up to 48 kilohertz which is perfect because most people use 44.1 or 48 kilohertz to record. So in order to send those eight channels of audio, you're going to need a cable. And that is a Toslink optical cable. Now it works much like fiber optic broadband works. It sends a signal over light really quickly. I actually bought two of them and that was how I was able to send the signal back out of the Claret into the Sapphire so that I could route my headphones through the headphone output. The second connection is the SP diff. Now this is available in two different variants. There's an RCA coaxial cable, which is what I have on the back of mine. I'm actually not using it at the moment, but that's what I have. And it's also available in an optical format like ADAT. So if you're using this to expand, just check which one that your interface has and buy the correct cable. Next, of course, you're gonna need a computer. So I have quite a recent computer. I've got my 2019 13 inch MacBook Pro here and it only has two Thunderbolt 3 ports. In order to get all the software set up, I actually had to connect both interfaces to the computer. So for the hardware side of this, from the computer, I had my Thunderbolt 3 and I bought the Apple adapter, which is Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt. And then I had a second Apple adapter, which is Thunderbolt to Firewire. And then I had the Firewire cable that came with the Sapphire, which is Firewire. 800 to 400 into the back of the sapphire so dongle madness but it's much cheaper than buying a new interface or a preamp i bought them both off facebook marketplace so i would advise have a look around have a look on ebay facebook just wherever because it's far too expensive 50 pounds for the usb-c adapter and 30 for the thunderbolt firewire so now for the software side of things my newer claret connects to the focusrite control software which is very new and up to date. My older Sapphire has to connect to the Sapphire Mix Control, which is an old legacy software now. So word of warning, Sapphire Mix Control is currently supported on the latest Mac OS, which is Catalina. But this is the last supported version. So don't update your main recording Mac to Big Sur when it comes out because it's not gonna work. Unless Focusrite are kind enough to give us one more update since it is a big one. Okay, so for actually connecting these two interfaces together, the main thing you're gonna need to do is make sure that they're in sync with each other. So you're gonna have to set one to be the clock source and the other to follow that one. And to me, this was counterintuitive because I expected the Claret to be my clock source and synchronize the Sapphire to the Claret, but it actually had to be the other way around. You have to use the external interface, not the one that's connected to your computer, as your clock source. So when I was in Logic, which is my DAW, it just wasn't showing the extra inputs. It would show me the eight direct into the Claret, but not anything I had plugged into the Sapphire. So this fixed the issue. So if you're having trouble with this, just make sure that it's the external interface that you're setting as the clock source. And it's also important that you set both the interfaces to the same sample rate. 
which if you're sending eight channels over ADAT, can be 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. So I've jumped over on the computer here. I'm gonna show my setup for both Focusrite control and Sapphire mix control. So first we'll jump into Focusrite control and I will full screen. First thing, click this little settings icon. So you can see I've got the Claret connected here. We're gonna set the clock source to ADAT, okay? It's probably set to internal, but you want it to be going, because I'm connected over ADAT, I want ADAT. If you're connected over SP diff, you could choose that. But you want it to be the external clock source, okay? And you've got your sample rate here. I've got 44.1, and just remember, if you're sending eight audio channels over ADAT, it's only these two, right? It's 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. I've got the RCA set up here. Uh, it changes, if you're optical, it changes all the options under your outputs here. So leave that on RCA. Okay, so main thing here, clock source. So these are my hardware inputs. So one through eight, obviously the analog eight on the Claret. And then I've already added in my ADAT. You can see here, this is the top back mic I'm using. So um, the ADA inputs one through eight are the hardware inputs one through eight on the Sapphire. That's the way I've set them up. I'll show you that in the next screen grab. So I have this one here on five because on the Sapphire, you can toggle phantom power, the 48 volt for channels one to four or five to eight. So I just like to keep the mics that require phantom power separate because I've got my SPDSX on one and two, so bump this over at five. So let me show you my headphone route in here. So seven and eight, that's my um, headphone one, Claret phones one, and then my nine and 10 is Claret phones two. Now these are both the same. I have solo to playback, so all I hear on these are the, uh, the DAW. So when I'm using Logic, if I just mute the kick drum in Logic, that's all I hear. If you have this untoggled, you're gonna hear your software playback and your hardware inputs. So um, that took me a while to figure that out. So you wanna solo that so that you can just hear what's going on in your DAW. But also, further down here, I've routed um, my ADA outputs five and six to my Sapphire phones one and seven and eight, the Sapphire phones too. So that's how I'm utilizing all four headphone outputs. And I have them slightly different. You'll notice here that these ones, I don't know how this one this should be. There we go. So I have these mute the software playback. So I'm only hearing the hardware inputs, right? The analog signal. So that's the setup there. That, I mean, this is good because if there's an issue, it helps me find out where the issue lies quicker. So I can just plug my headphones out from the Claret into the Sapphire and find out if it's in the signal chain. If not, it's probably something going on in my DAW. So I'm gonna jump over into Sapphire Mix Control. Okay, so we've loaded up Sapphire Mix Control. You can tell it's the older software. It's not nice to look at. <laughs> so before I dive into this, I wanna show you the Focusrite Help Center, they have amazing support. Here's an article from two years ago on how to set up your Sapphire for standalone mode. So it's Sapphire Pro 40, that's what I'm using. They even leave you, they give you screenshots, tell you what to do, and they even leave you the files to download, which is fantastic. So I set this one up, mostly it's the same. All I did was uh, add both headphones, they had just one headphone set up. They had the second one off. So that's the main thing you're gonna do. Analog in one to ADA output one and continue that along. If you download their file, it loads all this for you, which is pretty nice. Again, you wanna make sure your sample rate is the same as your other interface. And this clock source is internal because the other is ADAT, okay? And it's locked, you wanna make sure it's locked. There should be a light on the actual hardware itself as well, okay? 
so that's pretty much it for this one. So lastly, I just wanted to show you in my DAW how I have this all set up and how this should look for you too. So I have a track stack here for my drums, but then my overhead left is input one, overhead right two, and then input three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so these are just the eight inputs on the claret. Now my hi-hats are going to input five on the sapphire and that makes it input 15 in the DAW, okay? So the way it's set up, inputs one through eight are your hardware inputs on the first interface that's connected to your computer, in my case the Claret. Inputs nine and 10 would be my SP diff, but I'm not using them, so for me they're empty. 11 through 19 will be the eight inputs on the Sapphire, which are going over eight at, okay? So my SPDSX are on inputs 11 and 12, which are inputs one and two on the Sapphire. And this is input five on the Sapphire, so input 15. Okay, that's everything I have set up, so I don't have any more channels here. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button, that helps me out a lot. And uh, just comment down below. I would like to hear what you guys have got running as your setup, which interfaces you have connected. If you have any questions, please also comment. I'll try and get back to you. If you like this content, subscribe. I've got a lot more like this coming in the future. So stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.